وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We were talking about i'tikaf That's the topic that we were tackling and that we were discussing Insha'Allah ta'ala we're going to now go into adabuh Manners and etiquettes that needs to be observed by the person who's doing i'tikaf um, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah in his Zad al-Mi'ad the second volume page 90 he goes in great details he goes in great details pertaining to the adab that is required from the Mu'takif but I'll mention some of it inshallah ta'ala the person who's doing i'tikaf should b make sure that they are benefiting from the i'tikaf bi qira'atil Qur'an reading Qur'an this time you've chosen deliberately to leave your family, your children. You've also chosen to disconnect yourself from the worldly matters. You've now come into the masjid. Then don't connect yourself to the, to the outer world. Don't talk about what's happening outside. If you wanted that, then you would have been outside. At this moment, the person, you fill your time with what? By praying. وَقِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ Reciting Qur'an وَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ And remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَالصَّلَاةِ عَلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And sending salutation on the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم Also وَطَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ Seeking knowledge If you bring books with you Whilst you're doing i'tikaf You can read those books مِن تَفْسِيرٍ أو حَدِيثٍ Ibn Qayyim says Whether it be tafsir And the book that I would advise That a talibu ilm A student of knowledge or a Muslim generally should try to read whilst they're doing i'tikaf. It's an easy book and it's truly beneficial is the tafsir of Shaykh Abdul Rahman Nasir al-Sa'di rahimahullah. Whenever you read your juz, what you do is straight after that, you read his tafsir. It's very small and it gives you a beautiful uh, meaning about, uh, overall meaning of that particular verse that you're reading. The person shouldn't speak except if there's a hajj, a need. Don't talk to somebody unless there's a need for you to talk to them. Reduce the speech and the speaking in that, in that time. Why? Because at this particular moment, brothers, you're trying to bring the spirit of i'tikaf. The whole idea of i'tikaf is that you're alone and you're by yourself. That's the idea of i'tikaf. If you're socializing with people, it defeats the purpose of what i'tikaf means, which is to be away from the people. A lot of the times, a lot of the masajids, the people who register are so large in my number that is it even worth doing i'tikaf in that particular masjid? You question yourself. So if you know in your area there are masajids that have less people, it's better to do i'tikaf there than to do in places where you know the people who are going to be there are going to distract you. We're now going to move on to the next point, which is the eighth point. We've already talking about seven points, right? We're now going to move on to the eighth point, which is مَوَانِعُهُ What are the things that you're not allowed to do whilst you're in i'tikaf? The first one is الجماع You can't have sexual intercourse whilst you're doing i'tikaf. And this is of course based on the ayah وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ According to the Mufassirin like Imam al-Shawkaniyu Abdullah ibn Abbas mentioned uh, Ibn al-Jawzi mentions in his Zad al-Masir is لا تجامعوهن Don't have any sexual intercourse with your wife. And then, what is prohibited is the sexual intercourse. Like in a man, if he kisses his wife, it's makru. If he hugs his wife, it's disliked. But it does not destroy, nor does it nullify your i'tikaf. Because the ayah, ولا تباشيرهن مباشرة here means sexual intercourse. ولذلك the Quran, if you look at it, it's not a book that when it speaks, it speaks vulgar. It uses what is known in the Arabic language as kinaya. It's indirect. It won't say sexual intercourse. Uh, it won't say uh, 
um, having sexual intercourse with, with your wife, but it will use a word like don't come into contact. Wala tubashiruhunna mubashara means don't come into contact with your wife. In other words, don't have sexual intercourse with your wife. In another place, Allah uses the word lams. Okay? Uh, when Maryam said, Walam uh, yamsasni bashar, no one touched me. Lams is to touch. She means sexual intercourse. And then the Quran doesn't use the word sexual intercourse like that. What it uses is kinaya. Indirectly, it will say it. So the mufassirin, the scholars of tafsir, they all mention, Wala tubashiru hunna means don't have sexual intercourse with them. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he says, Ila jama'a al-mu'takif. If the one who's doing i'tikaf has sexual intercourse with his wife, batal i'tikafuhu, your i'tikaf is nullified and it's gone. There's no i'tikaf for you again. And some of the scholars, they brought ijma' in that particular issue. The second one is al-khuruj min al-masjid. You're not allowed to leave the masjid. But we, we say without a haja. There's no need for it. You see, there's a difference between haja and darura. Okay? Haja and darura are different. It doesn't have to reach darura. Even if it's a haja, just a haja, you shouldn't also still leave them. Unless it reaches a haja, you shouldn't leave. A haja, for instance, means um, going out for food. That is a haja. Because a person, a lot of the times in the masajis, they can find what they want to eat. But if you're five or ten people, all of you should, should, should all go out for food. If you have all ten brothers, send one of you. Give the money all to one person and let him go on your behalf. All of you give a list of the food that you want. If there's a need for him to have to get the food outside for you, then write it down for him and everyone gives their required food and he goes and he gets it for them. So the khuruj of the masjid shouldn't take place. Like a person can go if they want to go to the toilet. For example, if the toilet is outside the masjid, you're allowed to. The messenger sallallahu time, the, mis- the toilets were outside. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentions um, the person can leave for two reasons. لِحَاجَةِ الْإِنسَانِ أَوْ ضَرُورَةِ كَالِيْخْتِصَالِ in أَصَابَةُ janaba. For example, to do ghusl if major impurity happens to you. أَوْ bawl أَوْ غَائِطْ Call of nature. You're allowed to leave for all of that. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa his wife Safiya bin Tuhuyay, she came and she visited him whilst he was a mu'takif alayhi salatu salam. And when she came and she visited him, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got ready and he took her outside the masjid. He left with her alayhi salatu salam. He took her out and when he took her far, he came back and he came to the masjid. So this is permissible. If your spouse visits you, happens to visit you, okay, then you're allowed to take them as far away um, from the masjid. Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, he brings an ijma' that if there's no need for a person to leave the i'tikaf, that the i'tikaf is null and void. He says, If a person leaves the masjid, he said, there's no need for it, there's no necessity for it, then that individual's i'tikaf becomes null and void. Now we're going to move on to the ninth point, inshallah, mubahatu. What are the things that are allowed for you to do? Number one is, يَجُوزُ لَهُ الْخُرُوجِ It is permissible for you to leave لِحَاجَةِ If there's a need for it. That's mubah, you're allowed to leave. Also, you're allowed to leave if you need to go to call of nature, if you need to shower, and etc. These are things that are allowed. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did. وَلِيُّ الدِّينَ الْعِرَاقِيُّ In his kitab, طَرْحُ التَّثْرِيب He mentions that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for instance, he would, the hadith Aisha radiallahu anha, that the Prophet will bring out his head into the house so his wife Aisha could comb it. This is something that is permissible. That if a person, um, is, the masjid is stuck to his house and they go and they put part of their body into the house, such as the head, the Prophet will put it in and Aisha will comb for him whilst he's in the masjid. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was a This is permissible. Um, also the same is if a person gives you a Haircut. There's no problem with that. تقليم الأضافر Cutting your nails whilst in the masjid, you're allowed to. It's permissible. All of these are what is allowed. The tenth point, inshaAllah ta'ala, is موضعه Where is the place that you do i'tikaf? Where can we do i'tikaf? Can we do i'tikaf in our living room? Or is there a particular place to do i'tikaf? The ayah mentioned وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Masajid. 
So the i'tikaf has to be done in a what? It has to be done in a? It has to be done in a masjid. Like in the scholars, Ahlul Ilm ikhtalafu, they differed fima baynahum amongst themselves. What is meant by the masjid? Some of them they said, it is al masjid al jami'. It has to be, um, back at those times there was masjids which was small, 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 small masajids. And there was, when Friday came, all of those small masjids would be closed and they would go to the big masjid. This is the big jami' masjid. Are we all together? So this masjid is the only one that you could do it kafin. That's one call. The second one call is that you can do it fi masjid baytihi. You're allowed to do i'tikaf in the masjid of your house. The one that gets closed on Friday, you can still do it i'tikaf in that one. Are we all together? Your local masjid, you're allowed to do it. And the third view is you're allowed to, to do it inside <coughs> any place other than the masjid. Anywhere you want, you could do i'tikaf. And of course, what we have to say is, brothers, pay attention. Is that the ayah, and I want you to ponder here with me. The ayah says, "Wala tubashiruhunna wa antum aqifuna fil masajid al masajid." The masajid here has an alif al lam in it, and the alif al lam here in the Arabic language is istigraqiyah. Are we all together? Which means every masajid. It's not an exception. It's any masajid. So anyone who says it's this particular masjid has to bring what? Has to provide us with what? They have to provide us with evidence. Anyone who says is masjid jami' or masjid baytihi or any masjid that you restrict us to, then you would have to bring evidence because the ayah says, وَلَا تُبَشِرُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ أَيْ الْمَسَاجِدِ Are we all together? Meaning any masjid. And Arabic language, when the word alif al lam is kul, uh, sorry, it's al and it's istighraqiyah, you could put in that place the word kul. So in other words, you can say, وَلَا تُبَشِرُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي كُلِّ الْمَسَاجِدِ Are we all together? Every masajid. Is the, there's no restriction that you can do itikaf any, any masjid that you want. That's what the ayah clearly says. So is there any exception from this general ruling? In terms of the uh, masjid, masjid being jami or not, there's no exception. But there is an exception in the hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrated that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, he said, la that there is no i'tikaf except three masajids. The only i'tikaf that a person can do is in what? It's in three masjids. The first masjid that he mentioned is the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is masjid in Nabawi. And the third one is Baytul Maqdis. And the third one is Masjid Al-Haram. So now we have an ayah which is general, which is وَلَا تُبَشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Al-Masajid is general. And we have the hadith of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu ta'ala anhu which, is, which he says لَا اَعْتِكَافَ إِلَّا فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ الثلاث. That there is no i'tikaf except in the three masjids. Baytullah, Masjid Al-Haram, wa Masjid Al-Aqsa, wa Masjid Al-Nabi. Scholars now, they said, okay, how do we deal with this? Are we all together, brothers? The scholars differed. Some scholars, they said, this hadith is opposing an ayah which is clear cut. How is it opposing it? The ayah is general. It says every masjid. And we have the hadith of Hudayfa ibn al Yaman, which is restricting it to what? <coughs> what is it restricting it to? It's restricting it to three masjids. Are we all together, brothers? It's restricting it to three masjids. So some of the scholars, they said that the hadith of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman is weak. Why is it weak? They said because Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, this hadith has been transmitted from him raf'an wa waqfan. Raf'an wa waqfan. What does that mean? One time it's been attributed to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one time it's only been attributed to Hudayfa, meaning it's his statement. Are we all together brothers? So sometimes they said, this hadith, it's sometimes been narrated as though the Prophet said it in some of the riwayat, and some of the riwayat mention that it's the statement of Hudayfa. And they say there's a benefit for it to be different. Because if it's the statement of Hudayfa, Hudayfa can't go against an ayah, we'll take the ayah over Hudayfa. But if it's the Prophet's statement, then what? Then of course the Prophet <coughs> can restrict a general statement. Are we all together brothers? So some of the scholars, they weakened the hadith and they left 
by saying that the hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu la yasihu. Are we all together brothers? There are some scholars who took that opinion that is weak. And there are some scholars who strengthen the hadith of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman wa huwa al-rajih, that is the strongest. Are we all together brothers? And Shaykh, Shaykh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Bani in Silsila Hadith al-Sahihah, the sixth volume, a sixth volume, I think it's 660 something, he discusses it, Safahat, pages. And Shaykh al-Bani, rahimahullah, proves that both of the tariq, both of the chains, are both marfu', not one, any of them is mawquf. Are we all together, brothers? Shaykh al-Bani, rahimahullah, proves that. Not only that as well, the, the, so some scholars, they weaken the hadith. And so they said, there's no problem here. Alhamdulillah, we don't need to authenticate the hadith. Uh, there's no such thing as a hadith that says, لا, لا اعتكاف إلا في المساجد الثلاث. Another group of scholars, they say, no, the hadith is sahih. The hadith is authentic. But the way that they reconcile the hadith with the ayah is by saying, لا اعتكاف, there is no اعتكاف except the three masajid. They said it means, are we all together brothers? It means that the la here is nafyul kamal, that it's negating the completeness of i'tikaf, but it's not negating the essence of i'tikaf. It's saying that your i'tikaf will not be complete. Are we all together, brothers? And this is the tariqah Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih Uthaymin took rahimahullah ta'ala. And that is also another weak statement. Why? Because the asal of the kalam is to take it ala zahirihi at its apparent. And ta'wil, to divert it from its zahir, it requires a qarina. It requires an external evidence within it. How have you chosen, Shaykh Muthaymin, how has he chosen to say la, that the la nafiyahiya, it means kamal. When the asal, it means an nafiyu siha, the essence and the asal of this is not accepted. That requires an evidence on his side. Are we all together, brothers? And as al maraq uh, the author, the, the Abdullah, uh, Abdullah ibn Haj al Shankiti, Abdullah ibn Haj al Shankiti in his kitab Maraq al Su'ud, he mentions, Waljam'u wajibun mata ma amkana. That when we're able to do jama' of a hadith and an ayah, we should try to do that. Before we jump to the month, the qadiyah of what? Atarjih. Waljam'u wajibun mata ma amkana. We should try to reconcile between the hadith and the ayah. How should we reconcile between it? What we say is the ayah is general. Ayah is what, brothers? It's a general statement, which is وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ al المساجد here is general. And the hadith is specific. And the qa'ida, which is that a specific is given precedence over the general. Are we all together? You can't oppose it. The Prophet statement is specific. And the ayah is general. The specific takes precedence over the what? The general. Are we all together? Some scholars even said, وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِ They said, Alif Alam here is not even istighraqiyah. It doesn't show umum. It doesn't mean all of the masajid. Rather, it means ahdiyah. It means the masajid, the ones. Which ones? The three ones. Are we all together, brothers? Some scholars, they said, the Alif Alam here is what? It's not istighraqiyah. It's ahdiyah. It's the masajids. Do i'tikaf in the masajids, meaning the masajids. Which three? What, which the masajid? The three mentioned one by the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Are we all together? And then the call which is sahih to me, and that, be, that means seems strong, is that the place where i'tikaf should be done is in the three masajids only. Masjid al-Haram, Baytul Maqdis, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, sallallahu alayhi wasalam masjid, masjid al-Nabawi. Because of the hadith of Hudayfa. But this mas'ala, as I said, is a khilaf amongst the scholars. It's not a mas'ala which is all, you, all agreed upon. So if you take the other side of the argument, then no one should force their opinion down your throat. And if somebody takes the other opinion, which is what? If somebody takes the other opinion and they say to you, yeah, and he says to you that I don't believe itikaf is done, you should also force your opinion on him. But there's also a, there's always a, healthy discussion that could be hap that could happen. People can discuss these issues and talk to each other regarding it. So what, we, what did we say? The place that in which it's done is in those three masjids. Uh, that's how to discuss this issue. But it's more uh, than this, like in, we will. Um,
now inshallah ta'ala we're gonna jump to the khatima the conclusion which is the final point of our discussion and that is we took ma'na al-i'tikaf we took the meaning of i'tikaf we took adilla to mashru'iyyati the evidence that point towards the legislation of what? i'tikaf we spoke about that we spoke about its hukum its ruling we spoke about hikmatu the wisdom behind i'tikaf we spoke about the time in which i'tikaf can be done we spoke about the prerequisites, the shurut that are required. We spoke about adabu, the manners that a person needs to observe. We spoke about mawani'u, the things that you need to stay away from if you're doing i'tikaf. Mubahatu, the things that you're allowed to do when you're doing i'tikaf. Mawdi'uhu, we spoke about the place which you do i'tikaf in. And here we are on our final point, which is, inshallah ta'ala, if you guys have any questions that you can ask bi idhnillah al kareem regarding all of those points, inshallah ta'ala, but if I had said anything wrong or incorrect or I did a mistake while speaking, it's from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.